Okay, hello everybody. Um, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, my name is Eric Horgan. I am country manager for Elevon in Ireland, which means I'm responsible for the business, the revenue, and the market development of Elevon in Ireland. Um, prior to that, I headed up a product in Europe at Elevon and was responsible for developing our e-commerce online payment strategy uh, for Europe. So today I'm going to talk to you about payments and online payments. Um, and payments is enjoying a, a moment in the sun at the moment, and all of us in the payments industry are trying to bask in that reflective glory at the moment. And it's highlighted by the likes of Apple entering the payments uh, space back in September of last year with their Apple Pay product, and I'll speak a little bit about that. Um, as well as more recently, we've got our friends at Relex Payments, uh, an Irish company that was sold for 115 million about two and a half weeks ago to Global Payments. Um, and, and what this highlights, all this activity highlights, is that there's quite a lot of activity going on there, and there's, there's an understanding or a belief that online payments and mobile payments will be central to commerce going forward. And you've got all of these players with really, really deep pockets that are trying to make a play uh, and, and get a piece of that pie. So quite a lot going on, and it makes it almost a glamorous industry for, for once. Um, so, what I'm going to talk about today is we hear quite a lot from businesses that they find online payments complex. So I'm going to try and demystify some of the, some of the, the concepts around online payments. And I'm going to talk about offline and online as well, because what we're seeing these days is more of a blurred line between what happens online and what happens offline. And you as online businesses need to be aware about where where payments are going, where, where, where consumers are moving towards their preference for payment if you want to sell through your website. So with that in mind, um, I put the following uh, agenda together. So a little bit about Elevon and what we do. Um, I've been in the business 15 years and family, friends, wives still don't understand what it is we do. I'll, I'll take a, a cut at explaining what it is that Elevon does. I'll speak a little bit about the changing world of payments. So I'm going to speak a bit about um, mobile wallets, mobile, how it's impacting, um, some, some of the, the new models that are arising in online as a result of mobile. Um, I'll speak a little bit about just payments in Ireland, our preferences in Ireland for how we, we accept payments. Um, things that you've got to be aware of as a business, that you understand some of these trends so that you, know, you offer your customers the way that they want to pay and that's secure to you. Um, I'll be finishing off just with a, a short demo of our, of our payment gateway um, and just a short demo, you can get the long version outside and that's what I'm going to go through today. So just to kick things off, I just want to play a short video about Elevon. has changed. From cash to credits, checks to cards, signatures to swipes, transfers and taps. Technology has enabled what was once the imagination of fiction to become reality. And at the heart of all change and progress in the payments industry is one constant. People. Those we meet daily, those whose businesses we support and those we partner with. We've continued to bring the latest payment technologies to businesses large or small for over 20 years. We have become a top five provider of global payment solutions. We have 1.3 million customers worldwide and process 3 billion transactions a year. In Europe alone, we have 400,000 customers in 30 countries accepting payments in almost 100 currencies. But we can do even more for our customers. Whether it's contactless payments, e-commerce, mobile, electronic point of sale, or NFC technology, we will be at the forefront of the opportunities in our industry. We will be always open for our customers. We will be always on to support their businesses. This year, and in all those to come, the world of payments will run on Elevon. Okay, um, that's kind of a, one of those inspirational and aspirational videos our, uh, 
our US division put together. But I just want to talk to you a bit about what it is we actually do to explain what a, what a card acquirer is. So Elevon is fundamentally a card acquirer. So a card acquirer performs that banking relationship that, that enables businesses like yourselves accept payments online, to accept Visa, to accept MasterCard, China Union Pay, JCB, Amex, those card types, and then we pay you as well. So we've got two core functions, enable you to accept payments and pay you for those transactions that your customers made through your website. That's first and foremost. So we're, we're, we're licensed and we're a regulated bank. We're owned by US Bancor. US Bancor is one of the top 10 banks in the United States and we're, we're very happy about that as a financial services company. It gives us credibility and scale to do the things we want to do uh, and, and has enabled us to expand right throughout Europe. We're independent. You won't see us in the high street. We're not linked to Bank of Ireland. We're not linked to AIB. We're not linked to Ulster Bank. Um, we're independent, we're a monoline acquirer. The only business we do is acquiring. We're experts in, in payments, and we put that out there. And we don't care who you bank with, so who your business bank account is with, we will fund you into that bank account. So if your business bank account is with AIB, we'll fund you into an AIB business bank account. If it's Bank of Ireland, the same. And what's more is we'll do it quicker than they can because we've got membership of the, of the EBA bank scheme, so we will fund you quicker into your, um, into your business account than they will. We're actually the number one card acquirer in Ireland, believe it or not. Um, it's probably the best kept secret um, in, in payments. We've got over 32,000 businesses in Ireland use Elevon, and almost 30% of our business is e-commerce. So we've got a, a couple of thousand customers on our books that, that, uh, that use us as a, an e-commerce provider. We've got a rich product suite, so I'm here predominantly to talk about e-commerce, but as you can see across the bottom, we've got point of sale terminals that you'll see on a, on a store counter. We've got mobile merchant, which is where it's mobile as a point of sale, which will turn your mobile device via Bluetooth uh, hooked into a, a PED, a payment accept, acceptance device, and accept payments. There's e-commerce. There's uh, ePOS, which is Evolve point of sale, which is tablet-based payments, accepting payments through a tablet and Fanfare, which is a loyalty and offer solution. So we're, we're not just about providing payment services, we're about uh, offering value-added services to customers as well to, to help them win repeat customers through that loyalty and offers um, solution, Fanfare, which is just in pilot in the Irish market. So we're 15 years in Ireland, um, and there's almost 400 people in Ireland work for Elevon. It makes us the, the largest employer in the acquiring space in Ireland. Um, and the jobs are C-level jobs, they're, um, they're product development, they're high-level systems development roles. So, um, so that's something I'm very proud of as country manager, that we've got a big presence here, and we support most of our European business as well, um, predominantly out of our Irish operations based in Cherrywood and Anarco. And as I mentioned before, with all of that, we're probably, we fail on the marketing side, we're about the best kept secret, I believe, when it comes to success stories in Ireland in this space. So what I want to talk a little bit about today, obviously, is the changing world of payments. And there, there's any number of influences I could pick to talk about, because the, the world of payments is going through a, a mega, mega change. Um, the ones I picked, though, were, were mobile. Mobile, first and foremost. So from our perspective, we've got you know, thousands of, of businesses in Ireland use us as their online payments uh, acquirer. Um, and we're seeing up to 30% of their um, of, the, of that volume coming from, sourced from a mobile phone. So already we're seeing people are using their smartphones to make a payment of what previously was pure e-com. I've got another few stats about mobile. Um, so there's another stat about mobile, which is that you're never more than three feet from your smartphone. And this is just kind of, you know, this is kind of one of the things that shows your, your smart, the smartphone is now ubiquitous. It's there, and it's impacting every business. And I'll show you in, in a moment how, how that has changed some of the business models that, that, that are operating in, in the high street. Um, the other stat I have is that we, we see that in, in bricks and mortar stores, we see that three out of every five people coming into a shop believe they know more about the product they're about to buy than the, than the shop assistant. So that's a, that's a UK stat. Which really means that if you're a business owner, that's going to change the way you think about you know, your shop floor and your shop assistants, that you know, three out of every five think they know more than the shop assistant. Why do I have a shop assistant then? And that's influenced some new business models that sort of, um, I'll show you in a moment, that sort of straddle between online and offline. 
Then there's this, this phrase, showrooming. Showrooming is a, a, a term that was added to the Oxford English Dictionary just last year. So showrooming is where you enter a shop, you try out the good, you test it, you decide you want to purchase, you take out your smartphone and you look for the cheapest version of that um, on your smartphone. So this is something that's scaring you know, uh, retailers and, and it's, it's just another example of how mobile is changing user behavior and the way people shop and is influencing then the retail models that, that, uh, that retailers are using. Um, Omnichannel, Omni from, from our perspective at Elevon, this is, this is something we're seeing more from our, from our high-end e-com customers. This view that they, want to, um, that they want to be able to accept payments online and should you wish to return that, that good in a face-to-face -face store, that you've got the payments infrastructure and solutions and all the re reconciliation systems there ready to do that. So that's a challenge we have and a model we're seeing more and more. So as, as we kind of put our, our product strategy together, we almost now think omni-channel more than e-commerce. We're, we're going beyond um, a customer just requiring an e-commerce solution. We have to be able to, to be more flexible for the business models that are emerging because they are emerging, they're emer emerging quickly, and we need to be responsive towards those. Technology convergence in any uh, industry at all, we, we, we see this. And, and the example I use just from when I headed up product is, we used to have three product lines, which was mobile, e-commerce, and, and pause. Yet now we've got this a, a tablet-based payment, a tablet that acts as a point of sale. And you go, well, is that mobile? Well, no, it's not actually mobile because it's stationary there, it's sedentary. Well, is it e-com? It's actually closer to e-com in that the, the, the infrastructure is in the cloud and the, the processing is in the cloud. And it's just kind of an example of how what, what used to be kind of very stratified is now coming together and, and bringing um, new products and, and new demands from customers around what they expect from the products. And just to highlight that, so again, here are some of the, the business models that I spoke about. Um, and from, from our book of business at Elevon, so again, we have a, a couple of thousand um, businesses using Elevon as their um, online payments provider. Um, we find that less than 50% of our book is pure e-commerce. So we're finding that um, of our book, more than 50% have a face-to-face -face presence. So that's, kind of, that's why I, I, I'm kind of bringing in this omni-channel view of the world. So if you look at some of the, the models here that we're seeing in retail that sort of... Um, skirt the borders of, of online. You've got pure play retail, which is just straight online. You're an online business, you sell online. And, and what we would have seen, let's say last year in the UK, I wouldn't quite call it a phenomenon, but we saw some of our pure play retail um, want to set up pop-up stores in November and December as high season to, to take advantage of that and would have moved into the, 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 uh, the offline world for two months. So again, you're kind of from what I'd say from your perspective is you've got to think about where your business model will evolve as you select a payments partner to work with. Because that's an example of some, some, some of our business who thought they were only ever going to be online and moved into the face-to-face -face world. There's some other examples there. Virtual stores, we, we see this more in Hong Kong and Japan, examples of that. That's the example of the guy who got sick of showrooming. Sailed as a sales, so, sacked as sales staff, and, and pretty much within a shopping centre, just has a uh, has an interactive screen there for which you just make your payment and order your goods. And it's pretty much just, it's e-com, but it's a virtual store. So again, it's just a different model, um, and it's a different uh, it's a different way of thinking about e-commerce and, and where it's going. Um, I mentioned omnichannel already, and click and collect, obviously, again, is, is the first cousin of e-commerce, but, but again, it, it requires that you have um, you know, a face-to-face -face payment solution as well. So that's kind of the, the point I'm trying to hammer home. When you think about your e-com partner, um, your e-com payments partner, you've got to think of the range of products and services that they can provide as you go uh, and on your e-commerce journey and you evolve your, your e-commerce strategy. So I want to talk a little bit about contactless and near-field communication, purely because it'll make sense in a moment. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about Apple Pay as well. Um, but contactless is effectively my, my industry, the, the, the card industry's response to, to cash. So we were seeing we were having no success in displacing cash for payment for, for transactions under 15 euros. Um, so the contactless card came out where you just... Um, you just tap the, the card uh, against the payment terminal and the transaction is, uh, is processed. 
So that's the, the vision for contactless. It's you've, you, know, you buy your newspaper, you pay by contactless. You grab a coffee, you pay by contactless. You have lunch, pay by contactless. All of these low ticket value transactions. And contactless was, was launched in 2007 and didn't really take hold at the start. And as an industry, we have to take some responsibility for that because uh, we spent the years 2000 to 2005 telling businesses, telling cardholders, if you don't use chip and pin, all sorts of terrible things will happen to you with regard to fraud and with regard to chargebacks. Um, and we got that chip and pin message right and it landed. And then in 2007, we come along and go, here's another card, you don't even have to sign, you don't even have to enter your pin number, you just tap it, you just wave it. And we're wondering why consumer adoption was slow. But the consumer has definitely adopted. Um, we're seeing at Elevon every quarter, um, you know, 70, 80% growth in transactions for contactless is really taking hold. But the reason why I mention it here at, a, you know, at, a, at an online payments event is the underlying technology, NFC, near field communication, is going to be the enabler for Apple Pay and for what we believe is going to be the raft of mobile wallets that will begin to, to take hold over the next year or two. Which brings me on to uh, mobile wallets. So we see uh, Visa launching a mobile wallet in the UK. It's going to come in Ireland probably this year or early next year. Master Passes, Master pa MasterCard's version. PayPal we know about and, and an Apple Pay is, uh, is launched in the US probably coming to these shores um, at some stage this year. A mobile wallet, all a mobile wallet really is, is you just think of your, your smartphone as your wallet, your app as your, your card, and it's your, your card in your smartphone. But uh, your card details aren't actually in your smartphone, your, your payment credentials are stored securely on the, in the cloud and via token, your, uh, your, your, it's your, the transaction is linked to your card details and processed through. So, Probably stop describing mobile wallets now and just play you a video, uh, an Apple Pay video, so um, so you understand what I'm talking about. The New York Times said it best: a truly mobile wallet has long been described as imminent, but it remains elusive. Most have been a disappointment or have not yet worked well enough for mainstream adoption. Why is this? It's because, as it turns out, most people that have worked on this have started by focusing on creating a business model that was centered around their self-interest instead of focusing on the user experience. We love this kind of problem. This is exactly what Apple does best. And so we've created an entirely new payment process, and we call it Apple Pay. And I'd like to show you just how fast and just how easy it is. Okay, your total is 23.78. That's it! That's it! Maybe, would you like to see it one more time? Just in case you may have blinked and missed it. Here it is. It is so cool! So, the, the main two points I want to make about that is the, the, the hardware that's required to take that Apple Pay, that Apple Pay payment um, that's powered by NFC is already out there in the Irish market. Every terminal we deploy is NFC enabled. Every terminal our competitors deploy is NFC enabled. So, so the hardware investment required by, by businesses to get this up and running has been going for years. So as soon as this lands as a product, we expect that to take off as, as well as the um, as well as Masterpass and V.me. The other point I want to make about this is that's the offline version. That's, that's the real world face-to-face -face version of, of the wallet. But, but you'll also see on payment pages when you're online, you get the option to pay by Apple Pay. So that's going to be another uh, iteration of it. So, so 
by the end of this year, we expect that Apple Pay will be a payment type that our businesses are asking us to process for them on their behalf. So that's why I kind of mentioned like mobile, um, the mobile world is sort of driving new payment instruments and new payment types that pretty much um, fit very easily as well in the online world. So the lines are blurring and you need to be aware of what's happening here because uh, that there's almost a, that there's always a, there's also um, a, an online use case for these payment instruments. Anyway, so now I just want to talk a little bit about e-commerce, specifically e-commerce in Ireland. Um, so e-commerce, it sounds almost trite, kind of 20 years after the first e-com transaction, to talk about e-commerce as something new or something nascent. But we're, we're still seeing at Elevon the, the growth rates of something that's brand new and just taking off. So in Ireland, in our econ book, we expect, uh, we expect volume growth, um, so transaction growth between now and 2019 to be 15% compound annual growth rate. So year on year, over the next uh, few years, we see econ growing at 15%. And if you compare that to, we've got a, a large traditional book of um, real world face-to-face -face, um, merchants and customers, they're going to grow at about half that. So we're very excited about e-com, and that should really kind of, I suppose, reiterate to yourselves who are um, looking to innovate in the online space that customers are migrating more and more and more online. We're continuing to see it. All the trends are continuing to go up, and it doesn't look like they've yet saturated. Um, other point I'd like to make here is really that, um, well, first, first and foremost, the, the, the transaction value, the average transaction value we see between our econ book and our non-econ book is people spend a lot more online. Um, so that's something as well that should be of interest to you. But the other main point, I mentioned in here our neighbor UK. So like for any, um, for any Irish business, I mean, Ireland is fine for as you start off, but Ireland is the size of greater Liverpool and Manchester as a market. So at some stage you'll look at wanting to truly expand to other markets, and UK would be the one that we would advise. The UK is, is the largest e-commerce market in Europe. Um, and when you think about that, and you think about the partner you'll need as you, as you move into the UK, we've got solutions where, for example, you could have your .co.uk website priced in sterling, and your euro website and your .ie website priced in, in euros. And we've got a service, a currency service, that allows to, you to do that. We take care of all of the treasury and fund you into one bank account. And, and we see it as a service that's taken up by customers who are just dipping their toe into expanding into the UK and don't yet want to go through all the rigmarole of setting up UK bank accounts. So that ser service is called multi-currency processing and it's something that has really taken off for us. We really believe we're market leaders there. But again, it's just a point that um, you should be thinking more than just gateway when you think payments partner. You should be thinking uh, the full range of services that you will need to support your business as it expands. The other point there is that Ireland is pretty much a, a, cards, um, a cards market. Um, it, like, it probably seems you know, probably too obvious to state, but 87% of, of transactions, online transactions in Ireland are by card. And you can see the other big one there, 8.5% e-wallets being most likely PayPal, I think. Um, but the point there is that um, that's not always the case in other markets. So say you had a, a product and you, you, know, you were selling it in Ireland and you believed that there was a good market for your product in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, nobody pays online by card. They pay by a, an online bank transfer uh, method called Ideal. So again, if, you don't, if you're not able to process that on your website, you just won't be able to sell in the Netherlands. Um, and each of the European markets have their own mix of the payment types your customers will be comfortable in paying with. So it's something that you've got to bear in mind as you, you, you think about your international expansion of your, of your website, that there will be different preferences and different methods for payments, and you've got to get aligned to get that, or you've got to understand that, or you're gonna, you know, um, are you gonna fall on your backside as you enter some of these countries. So I'm going to get a little bit interactive here. Um, so I've got a question, maybe show of hands, keep you awake. Uh, where is the most common place for shoppers to drop out of the payment process? So when you are, as a consumer, you're on a website, would you typically drop out of the payment process at the basket page where you've selected the product and it's in your basket? At the payment page where you've got to enter your card details? 
when you see delivery costs, when it becomes clear to you how much it's going to cost for the, the product to be delivered to you, or when you're prompted for 3D Secure. 3D Secure is card issuers' um, uh, additional authentication service. So out of those four, basket page A, B, payment page, C, delivery cost, D, 3D Secure, what do you think is the most likely time for you as a shopper to go, right, I'm out of here, I'm not going to complete this purchase? So maybe I'll have a show of hands for A. A, okay, we've got about two or three or four. Um, B, we've got more, we've got 10 or 12. C, delivery costs a little longer, I think B is still headline. And D, 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 is, the, D is the winner there. The, the stats we have actually, and I just need to get them here. It's been a while since I've seen this slide. Um, we have 11% basket, basket, basket case, basket page. So that, it doesn't happen there. They, they, they don't drop out at that stage. So that's fourth place. Third place is 3D Secure, which is a bit of a shocker because for me personally, and I always rely on market data, but for me, my personal experience is I quite often drop out when 3D Secure is prompted because I always forget my password. Uh, in, third, uh, in second place is delivery cost at 21%. Uh, and this is a Sage Pay, uh, I think Sage Pay are in attendance here. It's one of the surveys they did last year. And uh, in first place is payment page. So payment page, which was a bit of a shock to me, I would have thought it was 3D Secure. Uh, and what that shows to you is, and what we're seeing from our, our more sort of, um, I suppose, highly evolved um, e-commerce players is that they're thinking about the payments page strategically. They see their monitoring dropout rates, they're, they're seeing where consumers are dropping off, and they see payments page as a problem to be solved where they, they, they make it as, um, as integrated with uh, the whole kind of user experience um, of the website. So, and on the other side, it kind of challenges us in the, in the payments business to develop more frictionless payment types. So that's why online wallets come about, because you're looking for a way as simple as possible to check out and not go through all this rigmarole of entering card details and entering all of those details and processing a payment. We're looking to, to develop within the industry, and that's what the mobile wallets are all about, the most frictionless way for consumers to pay, because that's the, the one that will most likely work. Okay, um, I spoke a little bit earlier about um, how you know, people find the whole e-commerce payments ecosystem very confusing. And I'll just give you a, a very high level view of, of what it is. You know, the left-hand side, you've got the, the website, which could be on tablet, or could be um, tablet-based on the mobile, and you know, all of the, the hosting that needs to be done, and the SEO and SEM, and many people here are way more qualified than me to, to describe that to you. Um, but then when, it, when you want to accept payments, typically what you would do then is you'd integrate with a shopping cart. So a shopping cart will have your, your product catalog and will enable um, a consumer who's purchasing a product to enter in their you know, delivery details. Then typically they would be, and there's a couple of integration options and I'll be going through some of them next, you would be redirected to the payment page of a payment gateway. So you'd be brought into the payment gateways infrastructure to enter your card details uh, and make the payment, and the payment is processed through, uh, through the acquirer, authorized out to the card schemes and back, and the acquirer will pay you at the end of the day to, for, for, your, um, for, your, for your transaction. So, you know, I can understand why it could be confusing, because you've got to select a shopping cart, maybe open source, you might buy one. You've got to select a gateway, um, contract with the gateway, get pricing from the gateway. Select an acquirer, be underwritten by the acquirer, um, get pricing from the acquirer, and, and all of a sudden, you've got three contracts. So what we've done at Elevon is we've combined gateway with acquiring, so we become a one-stop shop for your, your payment needs. So you get gateway and acquiring under one contract to try and simplify the process. And what's more is the shopping carts that are integrated to the gateway that we use, um, over, 30, over 30 of the shopping carts are, are almost pre-integrated to the gateway. So it makes integration between shopping cart and gateway that much simpler. And that's a proposition that we brought to the market um, late last year in, in Ireland that, that we're really seeing taking off. We're seeing um, customers really responding, certainly in the SME space, to a more simplified view that we just call you and you take care of everything from an e-com perspective. 
Um, just before I go into um, a short demo, I'm not sure how I am on time. I think I'm over. Um, just some of the things that we believe you need from your payments partner. So top right there, you've got getting paid. Um, and I mentioned earlier on, um, we do same day funding as a result of our, our membership of the, um, of the EBA scheme. So you get, you're gonna look for a provider and you want to understand when they're actually gonna pay you for the transactions you've accepted. That's very important. Um, tokenization, so didn't talk much about it during the, the, um, the deck, but um, card storage and recurring payments. So should you have a, a service or a, a subscription service where you want somebody to, to pay monthly, um, you should look for a provider who offers tokenization. So that's another thing that you should look for from a, a provider. Multi-currency processing and DCC. So I mentioned multi-currency processing. As you move into other countries, you want to be able to price in that country's local currency, and you want a, a provider like ourselves to be able to take care of that treasury if you're not at a place where that's something that you want to take on yourself. Some other things you should look for are fraud, a mobile rendered payment page, um, and some of the security features there. So we'll keep moving on. So I'm just going to conclude here with a, a short demo, um, just, just so you understand what it is that, uh, that, that, that the payment gateway does in the, whole, um, in the whole payments process. So what we have here is we've got, um, we've got Ben's Books, um, and we've got Ben's Books, which is an online bookstore, and you want to buy Huckleberry Finn from Ben's Books. So you click on that, um, Huckleberry Finn goes into your checkout, and you move to uh, the payment page. So you've either got guest checkout, where you just want to pay for Huckleberry Finn and get the hell out of Ben's books, or you might be an existing customer where you've set up an account, you've given your, your payment details, your payment details are saved in a secure vault, which is token and accessed via token, uh, and you get, in effect, one-click payments because they've got your, your payment details stored. So you've got those two options. Or if you're uh, accessing Ben's Books from a mobile, you'll see the payment page is rendered mobile friendly. So you get Ben's Books in a, in, in a mobile uh, format. For, it reads that it's iOS, or it reads that it's Android, and it presents it in a way that's, uh, that's um, a better experience for the user. And in this case, you've got DCC. So DCC is dynamic currency conversion. And effectively what it means is our system will pick up that somebody has a, a Hong Kong credit card, um, they're purchasing the book from your website with a Hong Kong credit card, so you offer them payment in Hong Kong dollars or euro, whichever one you want. You give them an offer of, would you like to pay 147 Hong Kong dollars for this, or would you like to pay in euro? Again, it's a, it's, it, it could be a better user experience, and it's also a revenue stream. So our model, our business model, is we share the, the, the revenue from the the treasury markup with, with you as a business, um, and some, some businesses see it as an, an additional revenue stream. So that's the mobile rendered version. Um, then should you just want to proceed to checkout, this then just becomes the standard hosted payment page. So this is what you get with the standard hosted payment page. You get, um, you're redirected to the gateway. Our gateway is powered by Redux Payments. You uh, insert your card details, and you process the transaction. In this example as well, should it be that Hong Kong, um, that Hong Kong credit card, you'll be prompted for, do you want to pay in your local currency or do you want to just pay, pay the euro amount? And then you're prompted to purchase some other books that align to your preferences there. Now, the other example is you're an existing customer. So you, you've, um, so you as an online business have, have designed uh, and, and implemented a tokenization service where you store the cardholder details. You want them to set up an account you want to have their card details online, or you want to have them stored uh, securely um, within the cloud, within a secure data vault. So they log on to that, and they're prompted with all of their payment details bar security code. So the CVV number is never stored online, so you'll find that's kind of the, our industry's response to stolen credit card numbers. If, they, you know, if, if somebody stole those numbers, they wouldn't have security code, and most websites wouldn't accept a payment without the security code. So all you do is you stick in the security code, and you confirm payment. And you get the books that way as well. So this is just another iteration. So sometimes uh, customers prefer to, um, that they're not, they're not redirecting their customers to another website, to the gateway solution. They want to keep it all within their own, um, within their own website. And the, in this case, you've got an iframe 
within the customer's website. So it gives the impression, it's a false impression, but it gives the impression that, that the customer is entering details on the customer's website when in fact it's, it's really the, um, that, that, that page is, is, a, is effectively the hosted payment page. Uh, and then we've got this other version, which is the overlaid iframe. So it gives the customer, um, it gives you the opportunity from a customer user experience to bring the, the, um, the payment page forward and again, give the customer the impression that they haven't le left the payment page. So that really concludes my presentation and really just what I wanted to, the message I wanted to get across was like Elevon and whatever payment partner you choose, um, we would urge you, or I would advise you, or I would urge you to think, um, to think medium to long term about your payments needs when you're selecting a payments partner. Because initially you'll just want technical services and somebody to process your payments, but you know, should your business take off, you will need a partner who can provide currency services, who can provide DCC, who can, um, who can help you process those other payment types that are local to other markets. And that's just something that you should consider as you think about your, your business going forward. Thank you.